Hey guys, my name is Brandon and welcome to Finance. So in this video we're going to talk about how to find CAPM, Beta, and Alpha. So before we learn how to calculate Beta, it's important we have a good understanding as to what risk is. So risk is the opportunity to gain or lose money. And there's really two types of risk that we're worried about, these being unique and market risk. So unique risk is firm specific. It could be diversified out, and investors aren't really too worried about that. Because it can be diversified out, investors don't need to be compensated for this type of risk. The second type is market risk, and this is risk that is associated with the wider economy and cannot be diversified out. So therefore, the more market risk an investor takes, the more they're going to need to be compensated for their investments. So just to reiterate, the two ones we're looking at is going to be unique and market risk. So if investors are only worried about market risk, we need to develop a way to measure this market risk. And we do this by using beta. Beta allows us to compare our investments to the market portfolio. And the market portfolio will always have a beta of one and will consist of all investable assets you could possibly think of. So they're big indexes like the FTSE 100, the S&P 500, or the Dow Jones. And what Betas allows us to do is it allows us to compare and see how susceptible our investment is to market risk. So if you have a lower beta, then that investment is going to move less with the market portfolio and offer you less of a reward than the market portfolio, whereas a higher beta will move more uh, will be more volatile than the market portfolio and offer you a higher reward so the easiest way to calculate beta is to use yahoo finance simply just type your stock name into yahoo finance and the beta will already be populated for you in this case apple's beta was found to be 1.17 so this means it's 17 percent more volatile than the market portfolio and one thing to point out is this beta will change it won't always be 1.17 uh, six months from now we could take a look at this stock and it could potentially be higher or lower so that's just something to remember so the reason why we calculated beta is because it allows us to see how risky and how susceptible our investment is to mar uh, the market portfolio and because of this, we could use the beta in the capital asset pricing model, which allows us to generate an expected return uh, from our beta. And the capital asset pricing model is found by the risk-free rate plus the beta times by the uh, market risk premium. So the expected return of the market minus the risk rate and once we generate this uh, expected return this tells us so much it tells us what our IRR is it tells us what our cost of capital is and ultimately it tells us the expected return we should receive if we invest into this asset so let's see how CAPM is calculated you want to invest in the market and you know that the risk-free rate is 2% and the market portfolio of 7%. Using Apple's beta of 1.17, what is Apple's expected return? Well, we use the for formula we just saw, and it's really straightforward. We just plug in the, the uh, numbers into the formula, and if we do that, we'll get an answer of 7.85%. So this tells us a lot. This tells us that our cost of capital or cost of equity is going to be 7.85% and it tells us that our IRR is 7.85% meaning that Apple's management should not take on any projects that offer a return less than this rate because if they're doing that they're ultimately hurting their shareholders value so the beta could also be used to look at a portfolio of investments so let's say for example that you hold two investments and these investments are going to be Apple and Walmart 
And after looking at Yahoo Finance, you find that Apple's beta is 1.17 and Walmart's beta is 0.31. If you want to invest 75% of your money into Apple and 25% into Walmart, what would your portfolio's beta be? Well, in this case, we, since we have two stocks and we know the amount of money we're going to invest in each stock, the formula we're going to use is going to look something like this. So it's going to be the beta times by the weighting of stock 1, so in this case Apple, plus the beta times by stock 2, in this case Walmart. And the formula is going to look something like this. And if you do the math, you'll see that our portfolio's beta is 0.955. So we know that just by looking at the question, we're able to look at a few things. So we see that Apple's beta is going to be higher than the market portfolio's beta, whereas Walmart is significantly less than the market portfolio's beta. And ultimately, that's going to play a lot in terms of how risky and how susceptible uh, this portfolio is to market risk. And I'll leave this question for you. Um, so is this portfolio more or less risky than the market portfolio? So another reason why we calculated beta was because it allows us to calculate a stock's alpha. And the alpha is simply just the actual return you gained or received minus the expected return you found by using the stock's beta. And what this tells investors is that if you're able to generate a positive alpha, then you're beating the market. So you're making more money than what you could if you invested into the market portfolio. However, if you receive a alpha equal to zero, this means that you're just making what the market portfolio could have offered you. However, if you generate a negative alpha, this means you're underperforming the market. So you should be investing into the market portfolio because you are making less money than what you could be making. And let's see how this is calculated. In a previous example, you found Apple's expected return to be 7.85%. If you actually received a return of 10%, what is the alpha of this investment? And is it a good investment overall? Well, like we said, alpha is generated by actual return minus expected return from beta. And in this case, it would just be 10% minus 7.85%. And this would leave us with 2.15%. So we have a positive alpha. This means that this portfolio is generating more money than the market portfolio. Now, this isn't going to last forever and it is very difficult to consistently generate a positive alpha but in this case this is what we have so as always guys thank you very much for listening if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment below and while you're down there please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like me to make a video on anything else please let me know and uh, have a great day